So let us think back to last week where we had the Buddha sitting under the Bodhi tree and attaining enlightenment. He spent the next seven weeks sitting under the tree, pondering on what it was he had discovered, deepening his understanding, and then the question came up, what now? He'd attained enlightenment, that was his goal. He was still a young man, 35 years of age, healthy. He could live out, if he wished, the rest of his life enjoying the bliss of his attainment. And then he also thought, mm, should I teach what I have discovered to help other beings? And he reflected, this Dhamma, one by me, is deep, difficult to see, difficult to understand, peaceful, excellent, not within the sphere of logic, meaning you cannot just reason your way to Nibbāna. Subtle, intelligible to the learned. But this is a creation delighting in sensual pleasure, delighted by sensual pleasure, rejoicing in sensual pleasure. So that for a creation delighting in sensual pleasure, this were a matter difficult to see. So, he hesitated. If I were to teach this Dhamma, and others were not to understand me, this would be a weariness to me, this would be a vexation to me. With difficulty have I comprehended the Dhamma. There is no need to proclaim it now. This Dhamma is not easily understood by those who are dominated by lust and hatred. The lust-ridden, shrouded in darkness, do not see this Dhamma, which goes against the stream, which is profound, difficult to perceive, and subtle. Going against the stream, patisotagami. What he's saying is that human beings generally seek out sense pleasures. They think that by amassing sense pleasures, they will be happy. The problem being, of course, that these sense pleasures don't last, and so we don't find lasting happiness. So, this is why he hesitated to teach. And it is said that Sahampati, the, the king of the gods, that means he was living in Rome number 11. He appeared before the Buddha and said, Sir, please teach the Dhamma. There are beings with little dust in their eyes who, not hearing the Dhamma, are decaying. But if they are learners of the Dhamma, they will grow. And so, he repeated this request three times, and then the Buddha said, OK, open for those who wish to hear are the doors of the deathless. So he had taken the decision to teach what it was he had discovered out of compassion. That 
there would be some beings, maybe not many, but there would be a few beings with little dust in their eyes. Most beings have a lot of dust in their eyes, but there would be a few, and they would benefit from hearing what he had to say. So he made the decision to teach. What was unusual at that time was that this teaching was open to everyone to hear. The, the Brahmins and their teachings were restricted only to the Brahmin priests. Other people could not hear their teaching. But the Buddha said, my teaching is open to everybody. Doesn't matter what your social status or social class, doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, whether you're a king or whether you're a pauper, man, woman, child, everybody can hear my teaching. And this was unusual at that time. He then met two merchants, Tapusa and Balika, who listened to what the Buddha had to say. He didn't give them a big, thorough, deep teaching. But they were impressed. They asked him, please, can you give us something which we can use to remember you by? The Buddha had nothing material to give him, except it was said he plucked some hairs out of his head and gave these to these two men. And they went to Sri Lanka, and those hairs are now enshrined in a stupa in Sri Lanka. Unless you follow the Burmese version of the story, where the two merchants went to Burma. And the hairs are enshrined in a different stupa in the capital, Yangon. But there's a third story that these two merchants went to Persia and the hairs were enshrined somewhere in Persia. You pay, you take, you pay as your money, you take as your choice. You don't know where, where, who's right? Well, I don't think we can know. So after that, he had to think who could he teach? He thought he would teach his first teacher, Alara Kalama. But he came to know that Alara Kalama had died just a week before. So then he thought he'd teach Uddhika Ramaputta. But he had died just a day before. So then he decided he would try to teach the five ascetics with whom he had been practicing these austerities for five years. They at that time were living in Isipatana. He was in Buddha Gaya, and so he had to journey about 130 miles on foot to Isipatana. When they saw him coming, they were not very impressed. Oh, here comes that, uh, that man who abandoned our principles of self-mortification. They had left him, remember, in disgust because he had given up on all their austerities. So they were not enthusiastic when they saw him. They said, ah, this recluse Gotama is coming. He lives in abundance. Well, that's a very relative term, not, not what we would call abundance today, but he lives in abundance. He is wavering in his striving. He has reverted to a life of abundance. He should be neither greeted nor stood up for, nor should his bowl and robe be received. All the same, a seat may be put out. You can sit down and join us. As the Buddha approached, there was something about his bearing, about his manner, that 
made an impression on these men. So when he arrived, they greeted him and said, uh, welcome, friend. The word they used was avuzo. And the Buddha said, do not call me by that term. I am now a Tathagata. Tathagata was the term which the Buddha always used to talk about himself. And it has several meanings. Um, it can mean one who has found the truth. It can also mean that he came as previous Buddhas have come and he went as previous Buddhas went. He did as he said and he said as he did. He was not a hypocrite. It doesn't really matter what exactly the term means. But um, this is the word you find in all the texts when the Buddha talks about himself. He never called himself the Buddha. He talked about the Tathagata. So now the Buddha says, I'm, I'm a Tathagata. And he said, um, you don't believe me? And they said, well, not really. He said, well, have I ever talked like this to you before? No, you haven't. Well then, listen to what I have to say. And he started then to deliver what we call his first sermon. One possible date is 588 BC, but it does depend on which date you take for the birth of the Buddha. 